Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today I have a review of eight lipsticks for you. This is my roundup of the best and worst in, well, at least these eight lipsticks. Um, I can't try everything. I would love to. I'd love to have the money to just go out and buy every single lipstick out there and try them, but sadly I don't and, um, you know, that's the way it is. So anyway, I picked a mess of things and decided to give them a try. Uh, this one that I'm wearing today is the winner out of these, although I gotta say, lipstick is a tough category, and I'm a tough customer where lipstick is concerned. You know, I want so much from my lipstick, and it's very rare that any one product can deliver everything that I'm looking for. This is a comparison of low-end and high-end. They're all mashed together here. I figure that if you can get a $5 lipstick that performs just as well as a $50 lipstick, then that's something I want to know about. So I put them head to head. I didn't care how much they cost. Although I got to say my expectations of the $50 lipsticks are much higher than my expectations of the $5 lipstick. Uh, here's the way I do it. I like to level the playing field for all the products. So I don't use a primer with them. I don't use a um, lip liner or anything else. I just put on the lipstick according to how it's supposed to be used and then I wear it all day through uh, you know a couple of meals and my regular life just doing what I do and then I come back every three or four hours you know depending on what my schedule allows to check in and see how it wears. So we we can tell exactly when the color wears off how it feels throughout the day, when it starts bleeding into my lip lines, and all that other fun stuff that lipstick does, especially once you get to be my age. And this is especially helpful for mature women because, you know, at 52, I am starting to get some lip lines up here, and a couple of these things really whoop, went right up in there and looked awful. And of course, that could be improved with, uh, you know, a lip primer or a lip liner, but like I said, leveling the playing field here so you know which ones do run and which ones don't. I also didn't stick to any particular formulation. I have um, all kinds of things mashed in here. Some are balm stains, some are true lipsticks. So you may think this is very unfair, but I just kind of pick things that I saw either interesting ads for or I saw someone on YouTube like raving about it. So I like wanted to try, you know, something from the brand. But basically the reason I throw them together is because they all have the same claims. They all claim that they're going to be long wearing, that they're not going to dry out your lips and that they're quite moisturizing. <laughs> and that they give you insane color payout. Um, and you'll also notice that I'm using a lot of bright colors in this, but I didn't, I tried to stick to sort of one color scheme because I was obsessed with like tangerine orangey pinks this summer, you know, really vivid oranges. And so a lot of these are really vivid colors. A couple of them aren't because I was like, well, if I'm going to spend the money on this one and love it, then I'm going to want it in a neutral color. And then, you know, later I can go back and get a nicer color if I really like it. So a couple of them are more nudie neutrals, but I don't think it makes a difference. You can see a neutral, um, you know, going into your lip wrinkle just as well as you can see a vivid. Well, actually, you can see the vivids a little better, but I do such close up that we can see what's going on. The other thing is that these go in order from worst to best. So the first product and therefore the worst one that I tried in this round of testing is Milani Power Lip. It's a lasting and moisturizing gloss stain. I tried this one in a color called Mango Tango. It uh, retails for $6.50 and it comes in eight shades. All right, now this is supposed to be an innovative hybrid of lipstick, a gloss, and a stain, and it's supposed to be totally non-drying. So let me go now to the video showing you the application on this one. And I have to apologize, I lost the original application video, so I had to reapply this one today. So that's why you'll see me in the same outfit just for the application part. This one is a little more difficult to apply because of the size of the brush. It's very small and it's hard to control how much product you're getting up in there. And where at least this color is very bright and vivid, it's hard to control where you're putting it. Uh, and so it needs a lot of really close inspection when you put it on. It goes on semi-sheer, but the color is really vivid. Like when this one says that it is a power lip, this gives you a power lip. There is no mistaking that you have this stuff on. Um, wow, maximum color payoff with this one. Uh, it's not sticky and it is very glossy. And I think this one looks very nice at first. I was very pleased with it. So let's go to the wear. Three hours into it, I had eaten lunch and it was still 
very vivid and very colorful. With this one, I got it all over the place. When I ate my sandwich, it transferred down onto my chin. Then from eating my sandwich, I guess I got it on my hands. I found this lipstick like on the door jam. I found it everywhere. It was on my clothes, but sadly, this is the one that was the worst bleeder into the lip lines. It was really, really long wearing. The color lasted through two meals and a whole bunch of drinks. Uh, it felt moisturizing all day, which was great. So it did live up to that claim that it was totally non-drying. So overall, the pros on this one are that the stain lasts and lasts and it is very non-drying. And the cons are that it does bleed and settle into lip lines. All right, moving on. The next to worst lipstick uh, in this round of testing was NYX Extra Creamy Lipstick in Hot Melon. This retails for $4 at drugstores and it comes in 10 shades. All right, this is supposed to be a mineral-based formula with a velvet texture and saturated color that resists wear and smudging. So let's go to the video showing me applying it. All right, this one goes on very unevenly. It's very sheer in some places and it globs up and sticks to dry skin in others. It needs two coats and close attention to apply to get a good look out of it. And it has like a soft semi-gloss finish. So now let's go to the wear. I'll bring in the um, three hour video. Uh, the color wore well through two meals, but it changed to more of a pink color. So it wasn't really true. Uh, the color payoff wasn't great because it was kind of sheer and it, and it didn't stay true to the color in the tube. It wore unevenly and settled into lip creases and bled into the wrinkles above my lips. So again, kind of stinky. Um, I didn't, it didn't feel overly drying, but my lips were flaky by the time it wore off completely. And some of the color was still left after eight hours, but it was still very uneven. So, you know, if you want your lipstick to last for eight hours, but have it look uneven, you know, I don't know, it's still, it's not great. So overall, the pros on this one were that it was long lasting color, but the cons are that it bleeds and settles. It's, uh, and it wore unevenly. So that's it for that one. Sounds like puppy wants something. The next lipstick I tried is really more of a um, lip tint. This is one of my all time favorites and one that I own probably every color of. So I was so disappointed that it landed third from the bottom here because I use this stuff every day. And as a matter of fact, people ask me constantly on my videos, what's that lip color you're wearing? Uh, and I always say it's Tarte Lip Surgeons. And so here it is third from the bottom, my very beloved Tarte Lip Surgeon's Matte Lip Tint in Exposed. This retails for $24 and it comes in six shades. The marketing on this is that it's a hydrating formula with a soft, beautiful matte finish. And I can attest to the soft, beautiful matte finish. That's why I love it. All right, let me bring in the application video and show you how it applies. This one um, has smooth, even application. The color matches the product on lips. It's a matte finish and it's very opaque, the first coat. So you just need to, you don't really even have to look at what you're doing. You just put it on and it, to me, it feels great. I feel like it feels moisturizing, but they're a little weird because it's hard to get them going. So it's sort of dry at first, but as soon as you kind of swipe it over your lips once or twice and it warms up a bit, then it becomes more creamy and easy to apply. And when I first put it on, I always feel like my lips are so creamy and moisturized feeling that I love it. All right, so let's go on to the wear and the disappointing parts about it. So this one was one of the shortest wearing ones that I tried. The color wore for about two hours, but not even through a meal. So after I ate lunch, it was mostly worn off by the three hour mark. All right, there was a tiny stain was left after six hours, but none after 10 hours. And it left my lips so ridiculously dry that I had to, even though in the beginning I said I didn't put a balm on or anything, I couldn't take it. After six hours, I put a lip balm on because my lips were just like peeling off my face. So overall, the pros on this one, what I love about it is that it doesn't settle or bleed into wrinkles. It makes my lips look younger uh, because of the matte finish. It doesn't have gloss that shines off of every wrinkle on my face and that's what I love about it. But the cons and the reason it's third from the bottom is because it didn't wear last at all the color and it was very, very, very drying. So, sad one. All right, now getting into the middle of the pack, uh, the next product is Urban Decay Revolution Lipstick in Streak. And this retails for $22. It's available in 20 shades. And there's also another three shades that are exclusive and you can only get on the Urban Decay website. Uh, the marketing on this one is that it gives you insane color payoff, plumping, hydrating, 
nourishing with jojoba oil, cocoa, and shea butters, and that it's long lasting. Such potential, high hopes for this one. I actually had used this in another video and a lot of people complimented me on the color and I did love the color, but I didn't like how it made my lips look, so that's why it's towards the bottom. So let's bring in the application video and we'll see how it applied. All right, so this was really easy to apply because it's not so opaque. The color payoff is good, but it's slightly sheer, so the color is different on the lips, but it's still a really nice color. What I liked about this range is that while I'm into these kind of vivid colors, I feel very self-conscious in them. So I like this one because it's a little bit sheerer, and so while the color payoff isn't like POW color, um, it's still like a very nice color on the lips. All right, it has kind of a glossy finish, and that helps to highlight all the imperfections on my lips, I feel. And it feels slightly sticky when first applied, but not really bothersome. All right, so that was the application, and I think it looked great at first. But in the wear, let me bring in that video, the color lasts quite a while, but it dries the lips. Uh, from like underneath and it creates these weird horizontal wrinkles in the lips. I think if you look on my upper lip in this still shot, you can see that I have all these really strange horizontal lines where normally my lip wrinkles are vertical. Uh, so that was very strange. I didn't like that at all. It clumped up on the dry skin and it wore off very unevenly. It looked nice from a distance, but not so much up close. The color lasted through two meals, three drinks, two snacks, and it wore off somewhere between six and ten hours. So the color um, longevity was really good, but lips felt dry after five hours, although there was no feathering in the outside of the lips. It, I felt like it make, made my lips look older. And so overall on this one, uh, sadly, very disappointed. Uh, the pros were that the colors are gorgeous, and this was a beautiful color that I loved. But the cons were that it kind of clumped up, um, it made my lips look wrinkly, and it made my lips dry, and the glossiness really didn't do anything to, you know, make my lips look younger or fuller. So again, right in the middle of the pack, this is number five, one that I had the highest hopes for because it was the most expensive. The next lipstick is Tom Ford Lip Color. I got it in Spanish pink. It retails for $50 and it comes in 20 shades. All right, on this one, this is supposed to be a blend of rare and exotic ingredients to create an ultra creamy texture and a smooth application. All right, so let me bring in the application video and I'll show you how it went on. Aside from the color being just totally awful on me, uh, it was a creamy and easy to apply lipstick that felt great on the lips. One coat is opaque and even with good color payoff and the finish is a soft gloss, which is lovely. All right, so let's go on to the wear. It immediately settled into the creases on my lower lip, making my lips look wrinklier and older. And I think in this close up, you can see that it's like a big glob of lipstick right in that crease down the center of my lip. The color lasted through a meal and um, the settled product was actually gone after lunch. So once I ate, that big glob and that wrinkle was gone and the color was still there and very nice looking. Uh, the color lasted really long, nine hours. I was really impressed with the longevity of this one considering that it is more of a traditional lipstick and those tend to be the ones that wear off the fastest. Uh, but it did wear off unevenly, which was unfortunately. It was very moisturizing and comfortable to wear all day, but my lips didn't look moisturized. Unfortunately, they looked dry and the creases were amplified. So overall on this one, the pros were the color payoff and the, the, um, the long wearing of the color. And the cons are, of course, the price, 50 bucks for a tube of lipstick. I mean, I, I see why people consider it the be all and the end all because it is so luxurious and feels so great, but 50 bucks, come on. Um, and it settled into my wrinkles and made my lips look older. So I don't want to pay 50 bucks for, products that, for a product that makes my lips look older, do I? No, I really don't. All right, so let's move on. The next lipstick I tried was actually not a lipstick, but like a balm stain. This is Revlon Just Bitten Kissable Balm Stain in the color Rendezvous. This one retails for $6, is available in drugstores, and comes in 10 shades. All right, this one is supposed to be a lightweight stain plus moisturizing balm for a perfect flush of color. All right, let me bring in the video of the application and I'll tell you all about it. Really easy to apply. It goes on semi-sheer, so the color is not as bright as in the tube. Uh, it has a soft satin gloss finish and it feels like a balm. It feels moisturizing when it first goes on, although it does feel slightly sticky. 
All right, for the wear on this one, let me bring in the three hour video. Uh, this one wore nicely for three hours and through one meal and a drink, but it felt drying after five hours. The balm was mainly worn off at six hours, but some color stain was still left on the lips. It made my lip creases larger as the day wore on because of the drying. Uh, it had no settling into fine lines above the lips though, and uh, there was still a stain of color at 10 hours. It was a bit drying, but there wasn't any peeling and flaking, so it wasn't as horribly drying as some of the others. So on this one, the pros are that it was had long-lasting color that stays put, and the cons are that it was slightly drying. All right, the second to the best in this group, this is the Too Faced Lip Injection Color Balm in Never Enough Nude. This retails for $21 and it comes in six shades. They added a stain color to their very popular lip plumper and it's supposed to give you 20% more volume and explosion of color and softness. It has natural botanicals to smooth and moisturize. So this one is another chubby crayon stick. It's soft and creamy and it applies very easily. It, it feels very balmy and it's slightly sticky but not greasy when it first goes on, but you know, nothing really bothersome. It goes on semi sheer, so the color payoff is not the best. It has that tingly feeling around the edges of your lips that most lip plumpers do. And the plumping effect I thought was decent. Um, you know, it didn't give me like, wow, big crazy lips, but I did feel that they were plumped up a little bit. So let me bring in the wear videos and we'll talk about how it wore. This one felt lightweight and moisturizing on the lips for five to seven hours. The color wore through one meal and about four hours. By eight hours, lips felt dry and peely, but there was no feathering. It didn't make my lips look older and more creased. It didn't uh, travel up into those lip lines at the tops of my lips. So for this one, the pros uh, overall is that it felt great to wear. Uh, the application was really easy and smooth, and it did offer some plumping. The cons on this one are that it didn't really last very long and that it was a little bit drying. So let's move on to the winner in today's testing. All right, so today's winner is Maybelline Color Sensational Lipstick in the Vivids. This is in color number 870 and its name is Shocking Coral. It retails for $6 and comes in 10 shades. Uh, the marketing on this is that it is a bright, vivid color lipstick that's never garish. It has honey nectar to nourish the lips. All right, so let's bring in the application video. This is smooth and easy to apply. The color payoff is good. It is very vivid, but it goes on slightly sheer, so the color on the lips doesn't match the color in the tube. Uh, this one I thought was gonna be much more orange because I have a lot of blue in my lips. This comes out very pink, um, but it is a very low luster uh, finish, so it doesn't have that shiny gloss that you know, reflects off of all your lip wrinkles, which is awesome. So it makes lips look smoother and younger. It feels lightweight and creamy, and it doesn't feel sticky or greasy. Let's bring in the videos of how it wore. This one wore well for the first three hours until I ate lunch, but then it was quite faded after lunch. And there was some tiny mild feathering in my really deep wrinkle. It wore off unevenly, but the color does stain the lips, so there's still a little bit of color left at the nine hour mark, but it was all gone by 12 hours. It felt comfortable for six hours, then it started to be a little drying on the lips, but not to the point of peeling and flaking. The pros, it is lightweight and creamy lipstick with a nice uh, matte finish. And the cons are that it's sheer, so the color isn't true, and that there is a little bit of feathering and a little bit of drying. So that was the eight lipsticks that I tested for today. Unfortunately, I don't have a report back for you that any one of these was super fantastic. None of these was perfect. Uh, none of them was even close to perfect. So still plenty of lipsticks out there, and if you guys wanna help me out by suggesting some of your favorites that I could test in the future, that would be great, at least to narrow the field down. All right, everybody, I gotta run. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this informative and I hope that you have a great day. Take care and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.